Hey there, welcome back to the Expositor's Pursuit. We're going to be looking at verse 10 of Philippians chapter 1. And um, I'll read this whole unit. Really, it's 9 through 11. But um, we love the little sections of scriptures here. And the church has always thrived and experienced God by looking at little nuggets and wedges of scripture. Just peel back the layers of the onion one little layer at a time. Philippians chapter 1, really verses 9 through 11, Paul's talking about the church in Philippi's growth or development or nurture, nurturement here as they're growing in the Lord. I'll read the whole unit, but we're only going to be looking at the beginning of verse 10 in this short little episode here. Paul says, And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory of God. Now, Father, as we look at this little scripture, I ask and pray, Lord, for our eyes that they would be opened our hearts would be tender and receptive to hear your word, that our wills would be activated and be found doing your will. We thank you for all things, Lord. Help us to grow spiritually. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, we recall uh, last week we looked that this is Paul's apostolic prayer in the church of Philipp Philippi here. And um, he, he laid down his, uh, last week he laid down the priority, and we looked at this priority, and, the, and that, was, that was love, truly was. And, and um, you know, he's just continuing on here with, with, his, with his prayer. And I said last week that, that we had like these, I'm not a good artist, but we had these, these, these building blocks here, you know, and he, he's building upon one another and love was it was at the very top here so he started off with the church in philippi's love and now he's just going to continue building upon these elements of spiritual growth so that is that is the theme uh, there's no doubt about it that that is the theme and we, we always have to look at the theme what is the what is the text saying what, what's the theme of this text and we we do that through Obviously, uh, finding the context, well, this is, you know, Paul's first imprisonment in Rome, you know, writing to the church in, in Philippi. Okay, we, we, we observe the details here, and we're going to do some of that today. And, and we find the theme, and the theme in this little unit here is no doubt their spiritual growth. And it starts off with their love, but now he's going to be looking at an, another uh, essential element for the Christian life, and that is verse 10 here, and, and that is just just goodness or excellence. Well, let's call it excellence instead, deriving from that you may know and approve the things that are excellent. Just so we can funnel and have a narrowed focus, I'm just going to literally here pull back just one verse so we can really just focus in on some of these parsing some of these Greek words and help giving us a better understanding. So, so this is just really, I, I want to really look, I want to kind of stop after here, um, but I couldn't figure out how to do it on my Bible markup here to just do uh, Philippians 1, 10a, just the beginning of this section is where I'm going to be. And then we'll look at this last section here uh, next time. But looking at this beginning here, notice that he says, uh, so that, uh, you know, th this once again goes back to what the first essential element of growth is. And that first essential element is love. Okay. So that he, he's indicating here that this is the first, uh, this is the foundation, if you will, um, so the second thing that he's deeply concerned, uh, that, that Christians understand is not only that they grow in love, okay, 
but, but also that they grow in excellence. And, and this is how we know that, but because of this word, so that. So it's, a, it's almost serving as some type of a conjunction to, to link us to the next phrase or next point. So that there's a progression then we see, you know, and, and boy, is, is that true or what? The Christian life is progression. We know that he's writing to the saints in Philippi who are in Christ. <laughs> so that is the initial set apart, the initial sanctification. You can't be any more justified than you already are. But what the Bible teaches, friend, is progressive sanctification, which is this ongoing uh, growth uh, of mortifying sin and, you know, this ongoing conduct and, and behavior becoming more Christ-like. Now, that's not too hard to understand. That's what the Lord requires, and that's what this progression is. But it hinges off of love in verse 9. So, which goes back also, you know, we, we must understand that, that it's not only love, but true love leads to knowledge, and that knowledge is God's Word, okay? The Word of God, which is, is truth, okay? Living a truth-led life, and then that will bring about this sense of discernment uh, within the Christian, able to discern. So, so he's kind of picking back off of uh, what, what this discernment looks like, it, it's not only being aware of spiritual things, as, as, as that is true, but, but this discernment uh, really points back to what I, I believe to be Torah, uh, and what I, what I want to refer to as Torah ethic or Hebrew, uh, Hebrew ethic, or the Hebrew ethic of, of wisdom. Okay, wisdom isn't just something like the Greek philosophers, like Aristotle, and something that you know in the mind. I think it was Aristotle who, who said that, that wisdom is the queen of the gods. Well, wisdom derives in Yahweh. Wisdom derives in, in, in God himself, that he is the eternal, self-sufficient, the one who exists, you know, the immutable, omnipotent, uh, omniscient God, okay? And that wisdom, and, and the Hebrews got it right, that this wisdom isn't something that we know, but it is something that we know and we live out. There's a practical application to this wisdom, and that's, that's exactly where this discernment leads to a sense of excellence. So we're going to look at that. And, you know, and, and that's why when a Christian's dominated by that love, okay, then there's going to be excellence uh, in their life. Okay, we are to strive to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. That doesn't mean reaching a state of sinless perfection, but it means growth and it means obedience and, and a deep love for God. So you cannot just, just read over verse 9 and, oh, glad we got the love thing over with. That was a few, a lot of lessons there on love. Well, this is the very, the, the very uh, meat and potatoes. Uh, if we have everything else and have not love, it's totally pointless and in vain. So therefore, this excellence is coming and hinging off of the love. So, so that it has to do with a motive, a disposition within the heart, not only what we do, but why we do it. So we're controlled by the love of God and knowing and experiencing this, this love and, and, and it leads us to uh, fulfilling our duties and this brings about excellence. And you know, in a day and age, uh, you, we often don't see this within the church. Uh, I mean, obviously, as, as I'm talking about as a whole, but, but you know, the question to ask is, does excellence define our ministries? Does excellence define our leadership? Does excellent, excellence define you know, our Lord's Day uh, services, or are we just maintaining status quo? So, so the Lord calls for excellence. And uh, so notice here, so that you may approve, okay? There's an approving that has to take place here. And the Greek word here literally uh, means to examine, um, you know, to, to discern, so, like I said, it's kind of linking off of that discernment a little bit here, but um, you know, I, I, in the in the Greek were in the Greek world, this this approving you know goes back to the to the to the to the metals and to to purify you know these the, these metals to 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 test their genuineness, 
you know, to make sure that all that dross is is burned off. But there's an approving that needs to take place here. And and we see that in the same Greek word um, in uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 56, when Jesus is talking about how these religious elite are able to discern uh, the, you know, they're able to discern the appearance of the earth. They can they can read the farmer's almanac and determine the sky, if you will, but they can't analyze this present time. He says, you hypocrites, you know how to analyze the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why do you not analyze this present time? So here we see this 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 word, uh, you know, the koimazo, and, and it literally is uh, proving or discerning, uh, you, you know. So there's just a little quick reference there you know jesus is like yeah man you, you guys are real good at analyzing the weather but but you have no clue how to approve the things that are excellent wow boy that that's not just for that's the then and there <laughs> in an immediate context but that applies in the remote context as well for here and now so you know you know this is this is the the approval that needs to take place so that Okay, you may approve the things that are excellent. You know, so, so approve is much more than just agreement. You know, well, you know, I, I agree. I agree to that. You know, but, but this is something that involves action. You know, uh, through, through diligence and, and seeking the Lord and, you know, prayer, uh, through study, you know, to examine You know, the, the scriptures, you know, we are to be like Sherlock Holmes with the scriptures. And someone had recently told me, they said, well, I just don't get into that, what you're doing and marking up things. And, and you know, I, I just don't, that's not really what I'm into. Well, you know, it, it should be what we're into, approving the things that are excellent. You know, that this is what, what Paul's talking about here, to, to study, okay, to investigate, you know, we're to be, be like the Bereans, and, and, and we do it for one purpose, so that we may love God more, and if we love him more, then we're going to obey God more. So, so this is the motive here, okay? So rather you like my technique or not, um, that, that's, that's not really what this is about here. We're just trying to love God more, and we're just trying to obey God more. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> you know, nothing's wrong with that. This is how we are to be living in accordance with the Lord. So uh, approving is to discern and, uh, you know, approving the things that are excellent. You know, determining, uh, careful, uh, you know, I identify with what the Lord would want, which is best. This excellence is, is, is what the Lord wants. We, we should want to do our very best for the Lord. And, um, you know, that, that's, it's very crucial to us. We should want to strive for excellence. And not only in our ministries, but our families, our home life, and, you know, obeying Christ's final commission. You know, the, the excellent things are, uh, let's see, their truths. Truths under attack. You know, these are, these are attitudes. You know, that these are, uh, let's see, our, our words that we say. These are deeds that we do. You know, that these would be, uh, these would be our thoughts, what we think about. So, so what are excellent things? Well, our truths, our attitude, our words, our deeds, our thoughts, you know, and, and all of this is going to be linked to the will of God for our lives not just that we would be morally refined if you will but that we would be sp spiritually transformed by holy spirit you know and, and all of this friend all every every bit of this points to one thing and that is this it all goes back to holy living that's precisely what's being said here. That's the excellent things. And I'm here to tell you folks, okay, we need to set spiritual goals and priorities. 
Okay, every Christian needs to to set spiritual goals and priorities for uh, you know holy living. But also, let me add something onto this here. You know, holy, holy thinking. You know, living and thinking, and all of that is pointing back up to that which is excellent. This is the very beauty of the truths of Scripture. You know, and um, this is this this is this your desire? Okay, do, do you really desire this here? Because this is what Paul is praying for. This is the will of God for every Christian. The things that are excellent, I'm here to tell you, friend, the things that are excellent involves the mind. Now, that's got to travel to the heart, as we've been talking about. But that is why Paul's praying that this is the chief desire here. Um, you know, going back to, uh, you know, th this idea of all discernment, that this is, this is where it leads. This is where it leads right there, buddy. So we, you, one more supportive scripture here, Colossians chapter one, verse 28, you know, because oftentimes, you know, um, uh, Christians do not know the deeper things of God. Um, they don't think with, uh, with, with the mind of Christ we've been given through his spirit. You know, they, they don't really have divine perspectives on things. And that's why they're not able to discern. And they fall victim to all of these worldly impulses and, and, and that's why this is important, friend. That's why this is important. So as Paul reminds the Colossians here, he says, we proclaim him, that's Christ. We admonish every man and teaching every man with all wisdom. We talked about wisdom a minute ago. Why? Well, here's why. So that we may present every man complete in Christ. That's all we want. That's all we want. So rather you like my method, my approach, okay, understand something. The end goal here is that. That is the end goal. That's all we want. And that is leading to holiness. Without it, no one is going to see the Lord. So I pray today that you would consider the things that are excellent, that you would approve the things that are excellent. And that is what the Lord wants, and that would be manifested by these elements here within our life. This is evidence of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And this is working out our salvation with fear and trembling. The only thing God's going to recognize is his own holiness. And we can be holy, and he will acknowledge that holiness on that great day of judgment by saying, well done, good and faithful slave, or he's still going to be holy and acknowledge his holiness in our judgment if these things do not want to become a reality in our life. Why? Because the goal is to become more Christ-like. Well, I hope and pray that you have enjoyed our little lesson. May God richly bless you.